folks. We got a guy who got a hold of me about how do you tie a bull down by yourself? Okay, that's that's one of your biggest things you want to avoid in your career. If there's any way that you can put some cows with him and get him to the corral or wait till your partner can come, come and help you, always try the other options first because things come up like... Um, have come up with me, I'll give you an example, is that the boss got a hold of me one time and said that one of the bulls had gotten out and got in with the neighbor's cows. And if I would, go haul the bull back. Okay. He said the bull was kind of on the fight. Now, he told me that having, I don't know, I'm not, I wasn't sure at the time why he said it, because it was just a bull that got out of the pasture, but evidently he knew the bull from the past, which I didn't. Anyway, I found the bull, put all the cattle in the bull in the corral, peeled off the bull, put him in the alley. I'm going to go get my truck and trailer and back up and load him up and take him home. I let the cows out. Remember that. And um, he just jumped over the alleyway fence, took off at a dead run, hit the gate, and just knocked the gate right off the hinges and took off back out in the pasture. This is a, this is a three-year-old bull. So... I got on my horse and followed him and went out there and I knew that there was no way he was coming back in the corral or the cows or anybody. So I roped him and I circled him up. And you've all seen circling up. And I do it a minimum of three times, not once. So I got him circled up and got him to walk over the rope with his front feet. And his hind legs take the bite of three wraps. And you just kind of face away and dally and hang on and the, the bull lays down. Okay, so now the bull's laid down, and you've got two hind feet wrapped up. Well, what I do is now I get to where I pull their hind legs up in the air and rock them on their side, and then I get the hind legs to lay across the top of the belly at 45. Now you just got to be use your imagination here. So now I get up close, and I tie off, and I step down, and then I take my hobble, and this is a hobble designed for that specific situation. Now this is a hobble with a knot in it so that when I put it down on, and if I got a long ways to go back to the trailer, if I'm close to brush or any kind of a hazard, if this bull does happen to bail off into the brush or whatever, this will not pull down any farther than that. So what I'm getting at is you're not going to cut the circulation off of the bull because you've got the knot to stop it. Now this can work on a cow also, but it, it's too it's too big for a calf. So now you put that on a front foot and then you pull because you already got your hind legs across the top of the belly and you stick it over one hind foot. All right, now you've got him hind to front. Now you untie your rope, take all the time to get everything unraveled, all the rope off, completely off, curled up, back on the saddle. He might flog around on the ground, but he'll lay there. So now you can trot back and get your truck and trailer. And what I do is I back right up to their head with the gate open. And I back right in until I know I've touched them. And then I put my horse halter on their head and go up in the trailer as far in as I can get and tie a bowline. Now I go back and I take this off, and in a, in a dire situation, in other words, getting hot or for whatever reason, I've been known to cut these off. I don't care. It's just a piece of nylon and two chain links. So now, that particular day, I got him hobbles off. He's tied to the back of the trailer. He's laying there up on his chest because he's tired after all we went through. I go get me a bottle of water, drop my reins, let my horse eat, and I sit down on the bank and drink a bottle of water. Then I go get another bottle of water, and I start on it pretty quick. He stands up. Now he's going to leave, but he hits the end of my lead rope. So now he pulls, and he tries all his options, and I got it short enough where he can't get around the end of the trailer. He can't get around the end of the gate. And he stands there. Now I get on my horse, and I start towards him. He jumps in the trailer. I jump off and shut the back gate. That's how I got to pull in by myself. That's uh, just one example of all the hundreds of things you can do.
depending on where you are, how much year you got on your bull, corn, muley, winter, summer, just use your head. But I gotta tell you, this is a really good deal that a friend of mine showed me, and I use it a lot. Now here's the other one. This is a smaller rope. And he's sucked down. This is what I use for calves and yearlings. And I've used it on a cow. And what you gotta know is it's a lot longer. And that's on purpose. Because I can adjust to what I'm dealing with. If I got some four-way calf, I can take this and overhand it like that. And now it's this long. Okay, if I got some full-grown yearling, I may shorten that way up so that he can get up on his brisket. And he may be able to even hobble around a little bit if he's in open country, because I don't care. The big deal is you don't want to tie a critter down flat on the ground when it's really hot and then go get a trailer and come back and find him dead. And uh, the more here, the, well, it depends on the critter. But anyway, these are the two sets of hobbles that I would have with me if I was on that quest. And I'll just say it one more time. Most of the deaths involved with cowboys and bulls is called nylon poisoning. And cowboys know what I'm talking about because they're gonna, as a group, they're gonna pull them in the trailer, they're gonna drag them, they're gonna do something. And if it turns, and if it works, that's fine. But when it doesn't work, and you choke them down, they're fat, and they don't last long. Bulls don't last long choking. You can kill them. So, if you, I even have a committee, I try to rope legs instead of necks when I have a lot of people helping me. I'll just rope feet until I got them all watered up, and then I'll bring a trailer in and do what I told you. So I wish I could give you a book on how to doctor by yourself or tie a bull down, but I can't. Oh, and by the way, if you're not mounted, you're dead. So really bear in mind what you're sitting on before you attempt something like that. And uh, while we're at it, I want to mention our friend Rufus. He's an Akchin cowboy down out of south of Phoenix by Costa Grande. He's not doing well with this virus, and he's in a hospital, and he's on a ventilator, and he has a 16-year-old boy and a mother. And uh, so our thoughts are with him. And Boyd up on the Navajo Res, he's he's right out there in front again, and he's got a grandma, he's got a mother and sisters and family, and it's dangerous, folks. It's real dangerous. So our thoughts are with our native friends. And for those of you computer whizzes that are working on the water deal, don't weaken. Water up there in the Colorado River doesn't have any uranium in it, no poison. Just go up and get it. That's that's your water. That's the place to go to, and that's where to make them put your pipeline in. Which, incidentally, the Army Army Corps engineers, think about them. Think about the Seabees. Nobody ever talks about the Seabees. You meet a Seabee, he can do anything. So I'll leave it at that. I'm not going to go on and on about the water deal up there, but now is your time to get it taken care of. And uh, one other thing, because, you know, we have a big place in our heart for the country of Australia, and they're having hell over there in Victoria in, uh, with this virus, and we just want to wish all our friends good luck over there and, and be careful. And uh, I would like to take make a statement that not all Australians ride by pushing with their feet and pulling with their hands. <laughs> <laughs> I caught hell over that, and I deserved it. So, anyway, good luck, mates. We'll, we'll be glad when we get to see you again. Adios.